Hey everybody, Carl Larson here with an exciting tutorial for you. First I'm going to be showing you how to make a 360 degree 3D environment in After Effects that's camera aware. Next we'll design a title sequence showing you how this arrangement allows you to composite in additional elements such as people, text, or whatever you want to add to your scene. Now you may be thinking to yourself there's already a great plugin out there that does this. And you're right. It's called Trapcode Horizon, distributed by Red Giant Software, and I highly recommend it. But it does have some specific limitations that this technique is designed to overcome, which I'll actually be showing you in another tutorial. For now, let's concentrate on setting up our world and taking it for a spin. The first thing that you'll need is a 360 degree panoramic photo. You can either shoot these yourself, purchase them online, or download them for free from Flickr as long as they're used in accordance with the Creative Commons Attribution License. Basically, this means you need to give credit to whoever took the photo. However you get your image, once we have it, we need to convert it into a cubic format. On a Mac, I like to use Click Here Design's Cubic Converter. It's straightforward, it has a great user interface. I like it. Another option for Windows users or for Mac users is PanoCube. It's a $10 application and it requires the underpinnings of Panorama Tools, which is a free download to operate appropriately. In this example, I'll be showing you how to use Cubic Converter to do the cube conversion. What we need to do is navigate to the finder, find our image, and drag it onto Cubic Converter. Once that loads in, we'll choose Convert to Cube Face Images, and click Convert. I'm going to stop this, and just to make math simpler down the road, I'm going to make all of the cube faces 2,000 pixels in size, and just click Convert. The last thing I'll do is save the images as a folder of cube faces in my desktop location. So I'll just say Minneapolis 02 cube faces. Great, we're all done with Cubic Converter. Now we'll close down the example and import from our desktop our cube faces. Select the first one, shift click to select all of them, make sure multiple sequences is turned off, and hit open. Let's pop these in our own folder real quick just to keep things tidy. We'll call this cube faces. And then we'll drop the whole folder on the make new comp button. In the dialog box we'll want a single composition using the dimensions, doesn't matter because they're all the same size. Still duration of 10 seconds will work well. Make sure sequence layers is turned off and click OK. Now what we have is a 2000 by 2000 cubic perspective of our 360 degree panorama. So the first thing we should do is arrange our layers in a, in a way that makes sense. Let's get the top and bottom together, front and back, and left and right. Alright, so the first thing we should do is probably just keep things organized and label our layers according to the axes we're going to put them on. The top and bottom are going to be on the Y axis, so let's turn those green. The front and back are going to be on the z-axis, so let's turn those blue. And the left and right are going to be on the, on the x, so let's turn those red. Now what we need to do is arrange all of our cube faces around the center of our composition. So at 2000 by 2000, 2000 wide, 2000 high, the center of our composition is going to be 1000, 1000, and 0 on the z. To distribute our cube faces into a cube, let's turn all of the layers into a 3D layer by activating the 3D switch, select the layers, and press P to get the position coordinates. Now for the top layer, that's going to be at the very top of the screen, so we'll go 0. For the bottom layer, that's going to be at 2000 on the Y axis. The front is going to come towards the camera, so minus 1000 pixels. The back is going to go away, so 1,000 pixels. The left is going to be at 0, and the right is going to be at 2,000. Let's add a camera to our scene. Layer, New, Camera, and we'll just choose 35mm, and let's call it Setup Camera, because we're going to add a second camera to the scene to animate, and see what we have. With the camera selected, press P to reveal the position property, and we'll just scrub this camera back so we can see what's going on. Alright, there, we're starting to get some 
idea of how these layers got arranged. I'm going to hit C to activate my orbit tool, and there we are. We have a front, a back, and four layers on the sides. So now all we have to do is rotate our layers to get them into the proper order, and we'll have a cube. So we'll grab all the layers, select them, hit R to activate the rotation property, and I'll just scale these up to make a little room for them. Slide things around to make some room. And on the top, we're going to rotate that nine to minus 90 on the X. The bottom, we're going to rotate to plus 90. The front, we're going to leave the way it is. The back, we're going to rotate to 180. And the sides, we'll rotate the left 90 degrees. And the Y rotation to minus 90 degrees. There we go. Let's see if we did this right. With the orbit tool selected, hey, it looks like we have a cube. This is great. All right, well, it's not an environment quite yet, but we're getting closer. So let's select everything. Command A, hit U, and just twirl them all closed just to keep things tidy. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually see what it looks like in our world. So let's add another camera, and this will be our POV camera. So new camera, and 35 millimeters fine. Let's call this POV Anim Cam, Animate Me Camera, just so there's no confusion. And by default, it's in the middle of the cube. So let's spin this thing around, and that doesn't look right. Well, let's look at the position property and see what's going on. By default, the camera rotates around the zero point of the composition. But the position itself, so the point of interest is around the zero point of the comp, and the position, it's some distance away from that center point. So our camera is actually still on the outside of the cube, and we're looking at the outside. So we need to push the Z parameter of the position closer. So we're going to now go through the cube. All right, so now we're there. Okay. We're still popping through the edge. And there we go. Just need to make this a little bit. So we're like 100 and 180 pixels behind the center. We're just rotating around the center of our world. Now this is starting to look a little more like it. We still have some problems, but we'll take care of them. The first thing that's obvious is that we have some major distortion going along at our edges. When the edges of the cube align, we're getting some really freaky things going on. This would never pass as an environment. We're just way too close to our edges. If I grab the transform tool here, see, you can, we're just right by the edges, and things get a little freaky when you get that close to the edge. So we want to just reset. We will transform, reset, make sure our camera is in the center of the world. Push this closer. Let's go minus 250. And now we have our orbit tool selected, and we're in the middle. But we can still see the seams. So let's take and uh, see what we can do to make this scene work a little bit better. First thing we'll do is add a null to the scene. Layer, new, null object. Make it a 3D object, and let's just put it down here to get everything neat and tidy. And we'll take all of our cube faces and parent them to the null. Now, since the null is in the center of the world, we'll just scale up our null to, say, a thousand percent. And really, the perspective didn't change. But because we're further away from our edges, we don't have that weird distortion happening in the corners anymore. We really have an environment that works. Now, there's a couple problems. The edges look pretty good. There's just a little error in there yet that doesn't look quite right. It's not seamless. Wouldn't pass. So what we need to do is give After Effects a little help. Since everything's parented to the null, scaling it doesn't change the position properties of the layers individually. So all we need to do is go in and back off each one of these by two pixels, and we'll get some clean edges. So just the parameters, just changing the parameters that we've already modified, let's back off each one by two pixels. That gives us a one pixel overlap on each edge. And 998. And there we go. We've got some good looking edges. No more seams. Now that we're looking at the inside of the cube, everything's flipped over. All we need to do is take the scale of our null and add a negative value on the x axis, which will flip everything over. Now, 
no turns looks right. So there we have it. One thing we can do is if we want, we can add a layer, new adjustment layer to really make this pop. We'll just add a uh, effect color correction curves, make the darks just a little darker, make the brights a little brighter, and that's looking pretty good. If we wanted to push it with a little more color correction effect, color correction hue and saturation, and maybe just push a little saturation in there. It's a pretty saturated image, but uh, just clicking this layer on and off really gives it a little extra pop. That's nice. All right, well, this is looking pretty cool. I think we could just leave it like this, spin the camera around a little bit, and be good to go. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Until next time, I hope you found some useful tips and tricks in this tutorial that you can use in your own work. Be sure to be on the lookout for part two of this series, where I'll continue building the title sequence I showed you in the introduction. Until then, I'm Carl Larson for creativecow.net.